It's no doubt that as I get my hands on more watches, one thing becomes obvious, that watches and cars, especially high quality, possibly luxury cars, go hand in hand. Hey, I'm Chase and this is All Things Random. Today, we are looking at the Alto 8 Infinity One Racing Inspired Watch. Now, this is not my first watch from Alto 8. In fact, I did the Infinity 2 first. I will leave a card right here. Now, the Infinity 2 is a little different in the fact that instead of a round case, it uses more of a hexagonal case. And instead of just using 120 degrees like a RPM or a tachometer in a car, it uses kind of the same thing except the minutes go 360 like a standard watch a little different the infinity one specifically has a round k shape which is very unique and it also uses only 120 degrees of the 360 degrees in a circle for the time telling we'll get into that in just a minute now i also did a review on their iron series now their iron series is also completely different than either the infinity one and infinity Infinity 2. Now that one has more of a Bell and Ross style square case shape with a round dial. It is on off-road series. I will leave a card right here for that one as well. All that being said, I'm very happy with what Alto 8 has brought to the table, especially if you love watches and you love cars. Before we really hop into the video, make sure to check out some of the links down below. A lot of the luxury watches I buy are on Joma Shop. There's a link down below that helps the channel. It takes you directly to their website. It doesn't cost you anything. Also, check out Chase Straps, chasestraps.com down below, my own personal watch strap company. Also, if you're interested in most of the watches I review, I do sell them at a heavy discount, over half off, sometimes two-thirds off. Uh, their original price of purchase uh, because I want the money to help fund the channel for more reviews. So check out again the link down below, watches I've reviewed for sale if you're interested in any of the watches that I've reviewed here on the channel that have gone up for sale. Now they go pretty quick so I would recommend checking it out you know, daily. Um, I usually post watches on there weekly and then they're gone within you know, 12 to 24 hours. Now let's talk about the Infinity One. Now the Infinity One reminds me sort of like a UFO on the wrist and you'll understand once I show you the wrist shot. This thing is extremely unique and its vintage aesthetic comes from the dials, the RPM and the speedometer dials of vintage motorcycles, which I am a motorcycle lover. I ride motorcycles, or at least I used to ride motorcycles on the weekends. I used to own two. I have sold those. As a cop, I've seen a lot of motorcycle collisions and I kind of just veered away from that, but I do love the aesthetic of vintage motorcycles. My favorite is the 1940 Indian Scout. That is one of the motorcycles that I lust after that I will own one day. Now, when I look down at this watch, um, the packaging is similar to the others from Alto 8. It does have a Jeep-esque box that it comes in and the packaging is always the same. The case and the watch is separate from the strap, all packaged nicely. And one of the things that I love about the straps is each strap offers that quick release spring bar that is easy to place on the watch. This one comes with a brown and it also comes with a black. So it's nice that they offered both. The one I have specifically on the desk here for review is gonna be the black PVD coated round case and it does have like a bronze accent to it. Now they have a lot of different versions on their website. Check out the website down below. In no way does it help the channel, but it gives you guys an idea of what they have to offer. Maybe you like something a little more bright, maybe a little more something subdued. They have all of that. They have plenty of different variations on their main website. One of the things that I do love about the watch the most is the fact that they haven't cheapened out on any of the materials. The case finishing is done quite nicely on that black PVD coat, um, and it also does have a really nice 
uh, bronze accent to include the crown, the buckle, and the tang, and the bronze accents on the dial. The dial is multi-layered, and we'll get into that in just a minute. Let's just go over some basic measurements because that's what a lot of people want to know are the measurements of this watch. So laid out here on the desk, uh, the case size is 46 millimeters in diameter, and it is a perfectly round case. So it's 46 millimeters all the way around. Now that also includes the lug to lug. Because it doesn't have protruding lugs on the case, the lugs actually are more subdued under the case. The lug to lug is 46 millimeters, so it wears more like a 40 millimeter watch. If you're looking at something like a standard Submariner style dive watch that has 48 millimeters lug to lug. So though the diameter seems a little larger, it's actually quite small on the wrist. The case thickness is 13.5 millimeters thick, and that includes the slightly domed sapphire crystal over that beautiful dial. The lug width on this is 22 millimeters, so sad to say I can't put a chase strap on because mine are all 20 millimeters, but the watch straps they do offer are very high quality. And again, we'll talk about that in just a minute. The movement inside this watch is a Miota 8215. It is a workhorse movement offering 21 joules and a 42 hour power reserve. The vibrations on this are 21,600 vibrations an hour. So it's not a high beat movement of four hertz, but it is a three hertz movement, which you know, isn't a bad thing. Um, honestly, you're really not gonna know it with that spinning second hand in the center of the dial. Let's just talk about the dial. Now the dial is a multi-layer. It offers the minutes along the top, the hours along that secondary step, and then a step up from the rest of the dial, you have the spinning second hand. This is absolutely beautiful in my mind, and I just love the way it looks. You have that second hand that goes all the way across that top 120 degrees of the dial, starts at zero and ends at six. Clearly that's zero as in, you know, zero minutes up to one minute. You can see that it has a zero, one, two, three, four, five, six large indices, then subdued in the smaller indices are 05, 15, 25, 35, 45, and 55. Clearly, these are the minutes. The way the larger indices are displayed are like a standard watch. You know, you'd have it normally at 12 and go all the way around to 12 again or 11. And uh, this does it a little differently because you're only seeing, you know, half of the dial, but it still does it in a way that you understand that it reads the entire dial. So basically, it's zero to 60 minutes or one minute. To 59 minutes, I guess, if that's easier to understand. Then you have that secondary step that says 12 to 12. That's 12 midnight to 12 noon. It's a rolling 12 hour. And the way it's displayed is actually quite easy to read once you understand how it's read. One of the things I do love is the spinning second hand in the center. I don't know why I like it, but I just do. I think it offers you know, a very clean aesthetic to the eye, and it looks great when it's worn on the wrist. This thing, I think, can be dressed up or dressed down, but it, I think it can fit nearly any occasion. And it is eye-catching when you are wearing it on the wrist. I've had a lot of people compliment me on my watch because it is very unique. Now, one of the things I don't like that I haven't found on the website is whether or not they use AR coating on the sapphire. Now, it does have a domed sapphire crystal, but one of the things that I found a little difficult is reading it under just the studio lights. Outside, it's not difficult to read it, but I do have this weird reflection under the studio light, and it's very hard to get a good, crisp, and clear photo. I think that's just any domed sapphire at this point, whether it has AR coating or not. Normally it offers a bit of distortion, so it's a little harder to film underneath light, but outside it looks just fine. It does have an open case back on the back and it does display that Miyota movement. The Miyota movement is not decorated by any means, but at least Alto 8 does have their own custom rotor on the back. A lot of these micro brands don't even do that. They'll leave the standard Miyota rotor on it, but Alto 8 put their black subdued rotor, which I think 
complements it quite nicely. Now this watch does not have a screw down crown and functioning the movement is quite easy. You pull it out once, now, one of the things I don't like about the movement that they use is it's a movement that normally has a date wheel. So you pull the crown out once and it goes into a ghost position. I think this is unnecessary. I think they could have used a different movement for this watch, but the movement is used throughout the entire series. So I understand why they did it. Then you pull it out again and you can change the time on the watch. Rotate it counterclockwise and you can see that the minute hand kind of goes across the top of the dial and that hour hand goes along the indices of the hour. Very easy to change. And once you see it function as you're going through, uh, changing the time, it's, it's easier to understand how the watch is read. The crown is not a screw down crown, but this does offer 50 meters water resistance, which is nice. That means you can wear it in everyday occasions. Most watches like this have 30 meters of water resistance, but 50 meters at least says that if you have it on your wrist and you jump into a pool, you really don't have to worry about it as much as something with 30 meters. It's really nice to see that even with absence of a screw down crown, at least it offers a pretty good, pretty decent water resistance rating. Now on the wrist, you can see that the 46 millimeters doesn't sit necessarily too big on my wrist. Like I said, it does feel more like a UFO on the wrist. If you look at the case shape, the case shape starts large, but then tapers downward towards that screw down case back. That tapering down means that it sits a little more comfortable on the wrist. And again, you can see the lugs are kind of housed within the case, not even um, on the outside of the case. So with that, the lug to lug is smaller than the diameter of the watch itself. This means it sits relatively comfortable on the wrist. Now, the leather straps that they use, the brown one that I have here, is extremely comfortable. It's extremely high quality, but with a lot of these high quality leather straps that have, especially the crocodile embossing, it tends, it tends to take a little more time to wear into the wrist. As if you had something like this vintage suede leather strap from Chase Straps, it's very flexible right off the bat, so it's very comfortable the moment you put it on the wrist. This is slightly stiffer, and a lot of these really high quality leathers, um, it takes some time to really get a nice curve in the leather, so it may feel uncomfortable in the beginning, but give it a few weeks of wear and it'll fit your wrist very nicely after that. Or what I'd recommend doing is finding a watch winder and then put it in your watch winder and then, or a watch box or watch case, something that has a pillow that has, you know, an oblong shape that allows it to sort of like mimic a wrist and then put it on there for a while to shape the strap that fits your wrist a little bit better. Now, what are my overall thoughts on this watch? I think for the price point, they're offering a lot. It is unique. It's one of those things you either love it or you hate it. You may like the watch. You may hate the watch. You may say, okay, I like some of the other watches from Alto 8. My favorite so far is going to be that Iron Series. I just love the Bell & Ross style watch. I love the shape of the case and the price is right on point. This is not really in my wheelhouse. I do like it. I do appreciate what they're trying to do with the unique designs they're trying to fit a niche in a niche in the watch market that a lot of people don't which is combining racing with watches a lot of people want to go with the standard dive watch or the standard dress watch but they really aren't willing to break the bounds of creating something unique. Alto 8 is creating something unique, and I really appreciate that about them. Now, if you like videos and videos like this, hit that subscribe button down below. Leave a comment of the content you guys would like to see on this channel. I have a lot of videos coming out in the future. I am starting a series called The Case 4. Now, The Case 4 is going to be for watch companies or watch brands that most people really look down upon. One is Movement, another one is Hublot, another one is Vincero. And I'm going to do a series on why those watch brands were necessary for the watch industry. I have done some shorts already in the past about Hublot, not movement, but look for those videos in the future. I also have a lot of dive videos coming up. This is all things random, mostly watch stuff with some dive 
videos, and some random stuff sprinkled in between. I am buying a flamethrower next month because I was like, hell, it's summertime here in Alaska and let's go ahead and get lit. All that being said, I got a lot of videos coming up. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you can be notified when I drop all of these videos. Until next time.